censorship is the threat to democracy, not Elon Musk. How do these leftists get it so backwards? I know. I think I know what the, the answer to that question is. But before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Share this out before we get so we can get this information out there. Also, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Also, check out my link tree in the description. It has a link to my Patreon where I talk about things I can't talk about here. There's also a link to my merch store where I have Let's Go Brandon t-shirts. I will not comply t-shirts, so check those out. There's also a link to my um, mental health coaching and consultation page, whereas if you're su suffering from any type of mental health issues, you know, uh, anxiety, depression, anything like that, and you're looking for some help, I could teach you coping skills. I could teach you how to manage those issues. All right, let's 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 talk about this news. Twitter's decision to accept Elon Musk's $44 billion offer has helped expose this country's free speech divide. On the one hand, many conservatives are expressing hope that Musk will bend Twitter's content moderation policies away from political censorship towards an, em an embrace of free expression. Sounds great to me. On the other hand, Many progressives are calling Musk's public commitment to free speech a, uh, quote, threat to our democracy. And they're backing that assertion up with action. One organization called the Open Markets Institute issued a release that called for the FCC, FTC, and DOJ to block Musk's purchase of Twitter. The group argues that the transaction poses a, quote, direct threat to American democracy and free speech. What? <laughs> what? So censoring someone is not a, is, is, is OK. That's OK. That's not affecting free speech. But allowing someone to purchase a platform where people can say whatever they want to say is is a is a is a is a threat to free speech. I, I, I don't. I mean, this is this is asinine. This is some of the nuttiest stuff I ever heard in my life. It's so backwards. Um, and its release cites the Telegraph Act of 1860, among other statutory authorities, in the context of arguing that federal agencies should block the deal. I, I mean, I don't it, it's not founded on anything. I, I, you can't make that argument, I don't think. But the FCC has no authority to block Musk's purchase of Twitter. None whatsoever. And while I am not in a position to speak for the DOJ or the FTC, I'm not aware of any basis upon which any federal agency could lawfully block Musk's purchase, particularly in the name of advancing free speech. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy that he could sue the crap out of the government if they try this. But that certainly won't stop people from trying. Indeed, it strikes me that, um, that many of the interest, interest groups that will endeavor to derail this, uh, it derail this deal are not going to do so because they are interested in the neutral application of competition and antitrust laws. Instead, they will be motivated by a desire to prevent the free exchange of political views on Twitter. They, I mean, everyone knows that Twitter has been slanted; it's been one-sided for years. You know, I mean, the, any any type of conservative ideology that goes against the. Uh, that goes against the grain of leftist ideology. They try to censor you and 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 all that other tactics that they use to 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 uh, to censor what you're saying. But so how did how do we get here? How do we reach a point in American discourse where there's no longer a broad bipartisan agreement that free speech is is a good thing? After all, it wasn't that long ago that free uh, expression enjoyed a home. Um, solidly within American mainstream. Ahead of the 2012 election, for instance, President Barack Obama gave a speech at Facebook's Palo Alto headquarters in California where he praised the free flow of information over social media, describing it as, quote, part of what makes a healthy democracy. But flash forward a few years and a few miles down the road, Obama just gave a speech at Stanford University, which I covered, where he spoke about free speech on the internet as, quote, a threat to our democracy. See how fast times have changed? <laughs> this is because it's going against, when, it go, when you're going against what he believes, it's going against free speech. But if you, if you agree with him, then, of course, it's free speech. That is quite a 180. And it reflects a broad cultural change in this 
in this country that is bigger than any one person, I would argue that the pivot point in the transaction, I mean, in the um, transition, likely centers on the outcome of the 2016 presidential election. Uh, that seems to be when a lot of media gatekeepers and elite opinion makers started to publicly question whether wide open, wide open political discord on the internet could be compatible with their preferred outcomes at the ballot box. It appears that this moment in time marked the turning point uh, for them, one in which they walked away from the decades-long liberal embrace of diversity of views and towards an illiberal tendency to cancel ideas that diverge from an approved political orthodoxy. That trend continues to manifest not just in our culture, but in our government. You can see it in the recent decision by the Department of Homeland Security to stand stand up and so called uh, to stand up a so called disinformation governance board. Talk about Orwellian, and I've done videos on that. Here's the obvious truth: free speech is not a threat to democracy. Censorship is. The people that argue otherwise are simply trying to maintain their control over the political narrative. Just look at argument. Just look at their arguments. The pro-censorship crowd claims that Twitter must stick with its current approach to content moderation, an approach that result in locking down the New York Post account, banning discussions about the potential origins of Stupid 19, and eliminating conversations about the efficacy of cloth masks, or else the website will be flooded with terrorist speech and cesspool content. They're gaslighting. And it's, intent it's an intentional distortion. What Musk has said is, quote, for Twitter to deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral, which, effect which effectively means upsetting the far right and the far left equally. I love that point. And that, a quote, and, and that, quote, a social media platform policies, um, are good if the most extreme 10% on the left and the right are equally unhappy. That hardly sounds like a threat to democracy. <laughs> that, I, I love that. It's kind of like uh, when you're making a deal, when, mo when both people walk away from the deal and, and, and both people either feel like they've been screwed or both people feel like they, got, they had a great deal, that's when you know it's a good deal. But indeed, Musk is right when he says that, quote, Free speech is the bedrock of the function of a functioning democracy, or as as the late progressive editor of the New York Times, John Oakes, put it back in 1954, quote, diversity of opinion is the lifeblood of democracy. The minute we begin to insist that everyone think the same way we think our de democratic way of life is in danger. What's old is new again. Because that's exactly what we have, what's happening now. For my part, I'm an optimist. I'm, um, I'm hopeful that Musk's purchase of Twitty will help uh, uh, turn the tide in this country away from censorship and towards a renewed embrace of free speech. But I think we can and should do more than simply place hope in the hands of one billionaire. That is, while I have encouraged uh, Congress to adopt a common sense pro-speech protections that will promote free expression in the digital town square. Doing so could promote transparency, accountability, non-discrimination, and user empowerment. I hope those reforms make it across the finish line, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let me know what you think about all this. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe, and check out democrepublics.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace.